so well here, and yeah. I I wanted to interview you and get on on camera to hear from you in your words how he improved through the treatment, and then we also helped you. Yeah, that's true. Huh? And, and and again. What I do is I try to inspire our families about what's possible, and then our families inspire me with what they do. Yeah. It's a two-way street, and Alex and yourself are just two more inspirational patients to me. And I want, I want uh, families out there who are in need of help to really understand what's possible. Yeah. Now, when Alex came here last year, he'd been diagnosed with that. He was diagnosed with Asperger's disorder. Right. A actually, he was um, autism spectrum disorder. Aut yeah, autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, we reassess him. He no longer meets criteria for mm -hmm. autism spectrum disorder. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, if you no longer have the symptoms that meet criteria, you no longer have the disorder. Right. And he did wonderful in the neurofeedback. And um, tell me just a little bit about his court. When he first came here, what was he like and how is he today? Yeah. Um, when when he first came to to the Drake Institute, um, we it was like he was he had always had this potential, but it was like it, he was disconnected from the world. And you, I'm sure you hear that a lot from parents that mm -hmm. uh, have children on the on the spectrum. So it, so he was completely disconnected from the world. And when he went through the treatment at Drake. When he went through the neural feedback, it was it was like we we kind of got our son back, and um, we were able to communicate with him and um, just connect with him, really truly connect with him. And um, it, and you do have uh, that situation where they're just completely disconnected. You feel like you're talking to them. They're not really looking at you sometimes they are avoiding the eye contact and about I would say maybe about a fourth into the treatment is where we really saw the change I know that okay we're not supposed to see the change already <laughs> a fourth and a fourth of the way into the treatment well, but you, you know every child is different every child is different um, yeah you, you can uh, you certainly could in Alex's case you certainly could yeah so that, that's about a fourth of the way in, into the treatment. We really started to see this change. Um, when we started calling him, he started he actually looked at us. And um, then at, at some point in time, it got to the point where not only did he look at us when we called him, but he also said yes or yes, mom, or, or you know, replied in that way. And these are things that I guess typical people take for granted. Right. But when you're on the spectrum, these, it, it's, it just, it feels so good. You know, when we first, we first did the brain mapping of him, uh, he had, we see this a lot with children on the autism spectrum, they can actually have an area of the brain where the brain is actually overstimulated, and if it's mm -hmm. overstimulated, it's not processing information. Okay. It's kind of like a, think about a muscle in spasm. It's, if it's over contracting, you can't utilize the muscle. The brain's the same way, and they'll, there was an area of his brain that was actually very overstimulated, oh. so it wasn't processing information. Yeah. So when you would try to interact with Alex, he wasn't available. Right. He couldn't take in what you were saying. Right, right. And simple stuff like his name, or or um, just asking simple questions, he wasn't he wasn't taking that kind of stuff in. And the two areas that were affected, one has to do with language. Okay. The other had to do with understanding nonverbal cues, social cues. Okay. And those are the two areas we worked on. And then when we went to the to the CAP, we did the called Z score, brain mm -hmm. neurofeedback. We were helping him increase the connectivity between the different regions of the brain so his brain begins to work in a much more unified way. Mm -hmm. You'll see kids on the autism spectrum, their brain is not unified. It's uh, in chaos. The different networks of the brain are not communicating with each other. Right. Imagine a, a, a business where you've got 19 managers, and let's say 15 of the managers don't communicate with each mm. other. Yeah, that's, that's what it, that's what uh, the brain is like in a lot of the kids on the spectrum that we treat. So you can actually help strengthen and, and move those connections to more normal functioning. 
so as he did that, he, it's like his brain woke up. Yeah. It, and it's like he woke up too. And yeah. he can experience experiences now that he couldn't experience before. Mm -hmm. So just being able to experience these experiences further develops him. Mm. And then he's been doing the secondary treatment program too. Yes. So it's truly, uh, it's, it's really remarkable. And um, you and your husband are wonderful parents, as most of our parents yeah. here are. Yeah. But as I've said many times, Without your involvement with us in helping the child, we can, we're can we limited to what we can do. The neurofeedback is a very powerful technology with all the advanced brain mapping technology we have today with treatment protocols. Mm -hmm. It's remarkable, but still we need parents' involvement, and you were so helpful. Oh, yeah. It, it helped me a lot. Um, well, when, whenever you have any kind of, I think, special needs child, you, you worry ab about them. And for me, it caused me not only just worry, but a lot of sleep, too. So that's why I went in to the, um, to the stress treatments, the biofeedback. Yeah, we gave you stress about yeah. Treatment. and that, that was pretty amazing because at first, when I, I, I was pretty skeptical when I came in at first, and I thought, all right, well, we're going to do it for Alex. And I know that you had asked me on... On I think on the first day, if I wanted to go into some um, biofeedback for stress, and I thought, oh no, well we're just really here for Alex, and um, but if I if any parent were to ask me, they should start those um, sessions sooner rather than later, <laughs> because you're going to be there at the same time that your child's there anyway, mm -hmm. and you might as well have started it sooner. I mean, for me it was. It was really critical for me to get back on to, I guess, a sane sleep pattern. I was only sleeping about three and a half hours a day. And over the long haul, of course, you're really worried about your child all the time, mm -hmm. but that does take its toll on the body. Yes, it does. So, it absolutely does. Yeah. It, it takes its toll on the brain, on, the, on your mind yes. as well. Yes. So it, it's really tough with all that kind of sleep deprivation to, to really uh, be a good parent uh, too, but, um, but I should have started it sooner. Be the reason why I'm saying that is that I, Alex was done with his treatment, but I was still going back for biofeedback. So if I had started it sooner, it would have actually saved me time. Too. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. And how is your sleep now? Uh, I'm. I sleep just fine now. I get eight hours, believe it or not, and I wasn't even close to getting that that kind of sleep. And and I notice it too that I am actually calmer. I'm a calmer person, which means that I'm a better parent too. Um, it means that I'm actually listening to people. That I'm not just. Um, rambling on, uh, I actually feel like I'm in more control over myself as a result of the biofeedback, as a, as a result of being you know, able are, to you, calm you, down. You're able to self-regulate, so the yeah. animal, now, look, all of us have stress, life has stresses, it's part of life, but you can, you can have enormous influence, Lori, on how the outside stress affects you internally. Right. And when you did the biofeedback for, for insomnia, it helped your brain just kind of reset it normal functioning, which helps your, your sleep system. Real happy for, for you as well. Yeah. I, I'm just curious, how aware is Alex of his improvement? Oh, he's, he's aware of it. He's aware of it. Yeah. Um, when we first started out with Drake, um, he, was, he was actually in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So he was um, halfway through, um, after he did the school district testing, he got promoted um, to the first grade. So he was, uh, he got promoted to the first grade, but um, uh, at the same time he tested above first grade level. So he goes now to a school where first grade, first graders are all doing second grade, second grade work. So they're all like a, exactly about one head, one year ahead. So he made a humongous transition and, and during that transition you would imagine that kids would not feel as confident about themselves but he has this air of self-confidence and he's very self-assured and it was not the case um, before. It was hard to even interact with him let alone know that you're you know that you're in the presence of a real confident kid 
So that's that's really the big difference is that he, he just came to life. And it's not like he wasn't, well, I, I think it, that's a, probably a, the best term is that he just, he came to life, really, and he was present, that he was present. He is aware of things going, going on around him and participating, too. And that's, that's really where we had um, a, a disconnect before. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's yeah. just great. Yeah. And you know what? We find that in many of our children, if we interview the parents months later after finishing their core treatment, they keep improving and developing. Yeah. Because his brain is going to be so much more receptive to other inputs that he wouldn't be able to to process before glory. Right. So we expect him to keep developing and developing. Yeah. Can I can I tell you something about um, his uh, sports camp? Please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, I had previously like a really clumsy kid mm -hmm. who wasn't really athletic, and um, he got he got first place in sports camp for swimming, and really? yes, <laughs> yes. So I had like you know a clumsy kid, but through. Drake was able to really come alive so much so he's in sports camp, he's interacting, he's personable too. So not just he's in sports camp doing his sports, he's actually personable and talks to other kids and does things and I mean and and is also competitive now too. And he got first place in, in swimming in sports camp. So that is, that is, that is remarkable. <laughs> I know everyone comes That's and they remarkable. want all of this like um, they probably want all this academic improvement mm -hmm. and things General. like that. Mm -hmm. And you just can't prefer to have academics. You want to see the whole child develop. And that's really what we saw with Alex. We saw him develop in, in all kinds of ways that we, that we didn't think were possible before. Well, I'm very gratified. I'm so gratified as our staff is here. You know, we're so gratified to hear what you've had to say. And, and I hope that your words give hope and inspiration to other families who may be in similar situations that you were in a year ago. Yeah, I, I hope so too because the, the longer you wait, the more you just kind of stress yourself out too. So it's better, it's better just to to make that leap of faith and just do the program, um, it, I, I, I don't think anybody would, would at all in any way be disappointed. I mean, even after the first treatment, I know that you say that, oh, it takes a certain amount of time, and it probably does, but I think once you, once you get started, you start to see every week, every treatment, you'll, you'll start to see this improvement and then you get to the point where you get to the point where it's just leaps and bounds of improvement that it's just i mean it's like a crescendo effect you kind of build up to it and then after so and so many um treatments you're like wow this is this is this is really awesome because previously they weren't able to do these sorts of things i mean they won't or my child at least wasn't really truly engaged. Then all of a sudden, he, I think this was maybe about halfway into it, all of a sudden he comes up to it to me and he says, and he says, I love you, mom. And he gives me a really big hug. And if you were to ask me beforehand if I thought that my child would do that, it wouldn't have been possible. I, I wouldn't have never thought that it was possible, but like I said, he woke up and he came alive and he was thoroughly engaged in life as a result. I've heard a lot of good news today. That's the best news I've heard today. Yeah. Glory, thank you. Okay. And we will keep in touch with you. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Valkoff. Thank you, Glory. Okay.